On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a guan. A blessed and wonderful Sunday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, you don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica and to all of the ones and ones them traversing to church in the morning yeah. please remember on the spot news media as loyal viewers and subscribers in your immediate prayers you definitely see how Jamaica run right and now so you know for sure so we need that now more than ever and today Sunday the official red rice and rooster day so all of the ones and ones them in the kitchen I deal with the finger licking chicken blessings to you yeah man may I tell you and if you're not in the kitchen and you're just the boat your business are going to your little regular thing in the streets please remember safe travel pan the gravel continue to look out on the corner yeah because what the old dirty corner boy them always out there alerts <laughs> yeah man may i tell you so we're gonna kick it off this morning over there in the troubled saint catherine south police division where we have seen a series of knockings and clappings that took place over there between january 5th and january 11th claiming the lives of some people so the police in that particular police division is stating that they have named five criminal elements as persons of interest so we're gonna hear from superintendent nicholson as he weighs in on the latest crime wave plaguing his particular police division listen we are seeking to speak to the following persons who we believe can assist us in these murder investigations jermaine straw also known as predem of a hellshire park address mario thomas also known as mario of a hellshire park address a man known as Kirk and another man known as Gona Gona. These two are believed to be related and they are both of Helsha Park. A man known as Teddy of Helsha Park address. We are asking these persons to report to the Portmore CIB by midday. Detectives from the St. Catherine South Police are conducting investigations into two recent murders which occurred in the division on Thursday, January 5th. 2023 in the Nago Head Transportation Center and another murder which occurred on Wednesday, January 11th, 2023 along Robin Way in the Helsha Park community. Now still in the St. Catherine South Police Division, just the other day, I covered a story stating that the police has arrested and charged a man in connection with the loss of life of Corporal Delwyn Jackson presently on your screen and his 43-year-old friend Kenroy Chandler, both of West Prospect District in Bagwalk, St. Catherine. Both were in the Central Village community of the St. Catherine South Police Division to purchase a car and got canned up by criminal elements on August 18th, 2021. Now it is with great pleasure my peeps to inform you that this criminal element presently on your screen identified as 27 year old Tevin Pasley from the Swamp Road area in St. Thomas was formally charged by the St. Catherine South Police on Friday for the loss of life of Corporal Delwyn Jackson and his friend Kenroy Chandler who were both of Bagwalk addresses in St. Catherine. Now this criminal element also took an undetermined sum of money from the corporal as he and his friend was in the central village community to purchase a car. He also got away with the corporal's service pistol. So that firearm is still presently out there 
in the streets. Now, this criminal element was cornered during a police operation in Lucy, Hanover. He was caught by the Hanover police and the St. Catherine South police in the Lucy market. So another job well done again by the squad of them. <laughs> yeah, man, may I tell you. So still in the parish of St. Catherine, but this time over there in the St. Catherine North Police Division. The police are maintaining a strong presence over there in the Gulf Lane area of Garden Pen, Spanish Town. It has been reported to on the spot news media that a male resident of the Garden Pen community was reportedly walking along a lane when he was reportedly pounced upon by at least one unknown person who fired several shots in his direction. Now this male resident seemingly being an avid player of the Jamaican sport Dandy Shandy dillied and dallied out of that gunman's firing line and managed to elude his attackers. Now the members of the St. Catherine North quick response team and other formations responded swiftly and took charge of that situation sometime after 3 p.m. Saturday evening. A section of the lane was cordoned off and the residents was told to use alternate routes to enter or exit the Garden Pen community. Now Garden Pen definitely not going good from Odia because it has been featured prominently in recent knockings and clappings and some which resulted in the loss of life of some people in the St. Catherine North Police Division. Some peeps living in and around the garden pen community please be mindful that that era is presently experiencing an upsurge in crime and violence so please be careful whilst you travel pan the gravel yeah man now over there in the parish of St. Mary, detectives attached to the Anato Bay police station are presently investigating a knockings and clappings that took the life of one of our nation's most vulnerable. This time I'm making reference to a senior citizen. Now presently on your screen is the man in question. He has since been identified as 72 year old Delaville Banbury. Now this man is a well known and well respected prominent businessman in the parish of St. Mary. He came under attack on Thursday night by criminal elements driving a Toyota Probox motor car whilst traveling along the Chovy main road in the parish. Now this is in the vicinity of the Westmoreland Bridge towards Anato Bay. Now for those who is familiar with the area going towards the roundabout where St. Mary banana chips is. When I just go through the little bad road the right there so them a fix up you will see the St. Mary Bridge on your left which can take you back into Highgate Richmond all around that side but if you continue straight that road will take you into Port Maria that is if you take the left at the roundabout or into Anato Bay if you take the right at the roundabout so just as you pass the Westmoreland Bridge that is where the knockings and clappings took place now it is reported by the police that the incident reportedly happened sometime around 7 p.m. It is reported that the men drove beside Banbury's truck and opened fire causing him to veer off the road and his vehicle crashed into a precipice. Now that precipice is said to be around 70 feet down. The police had to seek the assistance of the fire brigade that came and took his body from the vehicle. But by the time they took him to the hospital, he was pronounced you know what. Now it is said that robbery was the motive of that knockings and clappings. The police reported that Banbury's truck was searched and two bags containing money, a cell phone and a wallet was recovered from the scene. They further reported that six pen shell cases and a bullet fragment was recovered from the scene. The police also stated that the money was subsequently counted and sums amounted to seven million dollars was recovered from that motor vehicle. Now my peeps, as I stated earlier, the police are theorizing that robbery was 
definitely the cause of that knockings and clappings. Now, I'm pretty sure that Mr. Banbury is a very prominent businessman. A lot of persons would have known him. Now, anyone having any information that can help in solving his loss of life case, Please furnish the St. Mary police with the necessary information. And as always, if you're afraid of the police, link up on the Spot News Media, talk to me and give me the necessary information or any like-minded blog of your choice and we will definitely make use of that information and pass it on to the relevant authorities. Now over there in the parish of St. Elizabeth, one of my favorite parishes. Why? St. Elizabeth is dubbed the breadbasket of our nation. St. Elizabeth is a place where you can find the sweetest pineapples. If you need some peanut to make your porridge, St. Elizabeth at the place. Yeah, man. If you need some fresh skeleton and thyme, St. Elizabeth at the place for that. So St. Elizabeth is definitely one of my favorite hotspots. Some of the nicest little food spots them too in the countryside. There. Definitely St. Elizabeth on the south side. Now the St. Elizabeth police is reporting that this criminal element presently on your screen. A man identified as Dwayne Morrison, otherwise called Sharky. The man who was listed as the most wanted in the St. Elizabeth police division has been taken into custody. Now Sharky turned in himself to the police yesterday as a series of operations by the police in his community of Barbary Hall and other surrounding communities. The police them definitely put some pressure upon him. And of course, on the spot, news media has featured this criminal element on one or two vlogs before. And also other like-minded vloggers has put on the pressure upon him too. So he definitely decides, say, yo, him can't run, him can't hide no more because his face is all over social media. So the police said that he was wanted for the loss of life of a man known as Everton Spence and also as a person of interest in several other criminal offenses committed across the parish. Now, as we attempt to clean up Jamaica in 2023, because believe it or not, vloggers are making a significant difference. The police in St. Elizabeth is asking anyone that can assist with the investigations of this criminal element is being asked to contact the Black River Criminal Investigation Branch at 876-965-2926. Clean up Jamaica 2023. Yeah, man. And still in the St. Elizabeth Police Division, the St. Elizabeth Police is reporting an increase in crime for the month of December last year. Now, addressing the monthly meeting in the St. Elizabeth Municipal Corporation recently, head of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, Senior Superintendent Kenneth Chin, says that there were 11 major incidents across the parish. Now, we're going to hear from the superintendent in charge of the St. Elizabeth Police Division vision as he weighs in on the latest crime statistics in his police division listen we had 11 major incidents across the parish so we had one murder three shootings seven robberies taking place the murder took place at williamsfield district on december 26 and it was a firearm killing Looking at the crime figures at the end of 2022, we have 12 more murders than we had in 2021. 17 more shootings, 7 more rapes, 46 more robberies, 9 less breaking, 11 less aggravated assaults. So the overall figure, 2021, there was 224 compared to 303 in 2022, which is an increase of 79. Now we are going to head over the western side of Jamaica into the parish capital of St. James. You don't know, say, Moby is another tourism hub of Jamaica, where we call it our second capital. But Moby is definitely not just the second capital, but also the murder capital of Jamaica. 
So another series of knockings and clappings going over there, this time close to a police station. Yeah, man, may I tell you, just to show you, say them criminal elements here definitely don't respect law and order and all the prime minister and the ministers of government are try to implement certain things so that harsher penalties can be handed down to these criminal elements they seem not to care at all and continue the wave of violent crimes across the island now a man end up lose him three pints and another man injured following a gun attack near the Barnett Street police station in Montego Bay, St. James. This took place on Friday night. So the man presently on your screen is the deceased man. He has since been identified as Dwayne Dixon. He's of a Montego Bay address. The Barnett Street Police suggests that sometime about 8.30 p.m., Dixon and several other persons were standing along a section of the street near to the police station when they were attacked by at least two men. Dixon ran, but he was chased by the criminal elements and get caught up multiple times. He collapsed near the gas station. It is said that the male that was in pursuit walked over him and, as was his last say, Empty the clip on them. Yeah, man, may I tell you, the man gave him the full hundred. A male vendor who was sitting nearby was injured by a stray can, but he was transported to the hospital. His condition is not considered serious. But this brother, on your screen, known as Dwayne Dixon, is a known violence producer, a real old dirty kind of boy in the streets. Because we can all remember the knockings and clappings in the arcade some time ago when a man who goes by the name of Dez was stabbed and shot in the arcade. Now, this criminal element on your screen is said to be the main perpetrator of that brutal knockings and clappings of the man known as Dez. So this brother here, Waterloo, just come circle him and come meet him. Yeah, man. Man, them name him food a bad man market and broke the plate. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about right now, you know, is the hot topic out of road there upon everybody's lips. This controversial figure is not just on the radar of local authorities in Jamaica, but he has also been on the radar of the United States federal government. Now, this man here is definitely not no plating, definitely not a regular old dirty corner boy. This brother here is a top corner boy. Yeah, man, may I tell you. Definitely no stranger to on the spot news media and definitely no stranger to the Jamaican authorities, especially those in the Kingston Western Police Division. Who am I making reference to? This man presently on your screen. This man is known, his birth name is Aaron Thompson, but popularly known in the criminal underworld as Birdie. Now, this man is the reputed gang leader for the infamous Bird Nation gang. Now, for my more recent viewers and subscribers, I'm pretty sure you would not have heard me speak about this particular person and the gang in which he is the head cook and buckle washer of. But this man is definitely one to know, one for you to look out for. So I've done several vlogs on this personality, this controversial personality, Aaron Thompson, otherwise known as Birdie, the reputed gang leader for the Bird Nation gang. Now, this gang has its base, its headquarters in the Kingston Western Police Division, namely Gem Road and Lincoln Avenue. Now, this brother has been featured, as I stated, on On The Spot News Media and several vlogs. So these are some of the vlogs, just some that you can definitely go back, watch and catch up with these vlogs so you can understand who is this infamous character. In my view, he is one of the most dangerous criminal elements 
out of Jamaica right now, living among you, the regular members of Chan Public in Pittsburgh, in the United States of America. So watch this now, my peeps. On Friday, on the spot news media, get to understand that the United States federal government officers running Pam Birdie and members of his criminal entity, yeah, man, arrested and charged many of them. Among them, it is alleged that his right hand man, known as Bunny, also got charged jointly with him. Now, Bunny, definitely a known criminal character that is associated with the Bird Nation gang from Alpha Lincoln. Now, this is Bunny presently on your screen. Now, for those who understand these indictment papers on your screen, this is the arrest documents of Birdie, Aaron Thompson, otherwise known as Birdie, presently on your screen. Now, let me give you a close-up shot to show you exactly what he was charged for. Now, it is said that he has been charged for prohibited acts. Now, the term prohibited acts, this term refers to misdemeanor and felony drug possession charges that violates the state's Controlled Substance Act. Now, from a reliable source, that source indicated that Birdie was caught in possession of marijuana and a small portion of what we would describe as the white lady, the amines powder type of substance. Yeah, man, may I tell you? So because of the small quantities that he was held with, he was offered a $50,000 bail bond. He tried to bail himself but authorities would not allow him to do his own bond stating that the monies that he would have used are collateral may be proceedings from drugs now he has to get somebody of a basically reasonable character to come in and take up that $50,000 bond. So on the spot news media will definitely be keeping close tabs on this one as it unfolds in the United States federal court. But knowing the feds, you know my peeps, the feds will arrest you on these small charges and bring you before the federal court and have a host of other charges just waiting on you so on the spot news media will definitely be following this one to see what will be the outcome let us all see if this is going to be the fall of the infamous gang leader birdie who runs one of the most reputed gangs in Jamaica and also abroad known as the Bird Nation Gang or some would call it the Eagle Nation but as always you don't know my peeps stay tuned to on the spot news media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast on the spot news media yeah man